Alors, ma chère sœur, la première dame d'Haïti, euh, euh, Excellency Toyin Saraki, founder of uh, the World Being Foundation, Your Royal Highness Princess Sarah Zaid of Jordan, Distinguished Chair of uh, ICFP International Steering Committee, Senior Representatives of uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Institute for Population and uh, Reproductive Health at uh, the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of uh, Public Health, Senior Representatives of uh, Government and Civil Society, Distinguished Family Planning 2020 Reference Group members, valued partners, youth delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. <laughs> Thank you once again for the high honor of addressing this distinguished audience and the eminent panel of whom the theme Women of Impact is testimony to their daily work. They are indeed global leaders creating positive change for the well-being of their communities. We are heartened that you have chosen Rwanda to host the international conference on family planning, which stands to enrich all our efforts in promoting quality access to family planning and sexual reproductive health services. Our path to delivering the much needed and the sustainable change in our communities has been made more efficient thanks to the work of the United Nations together with our governments. Consequently, we are able to focus on our, of, uh, all our energies toward the achievement of all the SDGs with goal five for gender equality and empowerment at the epicenter of uh, this work. Indeed, this is in tandem with, uh, and, with and response to Rwanda's national strategy for transformation. Honorable guests, since time immemorial, women have held roles that are vital, yet that have often been taken for granted in childbearing, nurturing, educating, feeding, and raising the world. Every so often, this comes with a heavy cost to their health and well-being. It's therefore logical that when providing with a conducive environment and truly empowered to voice their opinions, they thrive. We have seen women morph into strong, insightful, and intuitive key players able to effectively impact positive and lasting change around them. It behooves us, therefore, to use this and any powerful platform to encourage women's effort in order to promote and avail the life, altering, liberating family planning and sexual reproductive health services. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are often called upon to become the face of diverse causes because the public sees in us our ability to multitask. In one stroke, we become the advocate, the catalyst, facilitator, applauder of others in their roles as we strive to hold ourselves and those around us accountable for the promises and actions we make. This is what women's leadership is about. We catalyze positive change. We lead without imposing. We face challenges head on as natural leaders because our orientation from childhood is one of caregiving and oversight. Esteemed guests, if women leaders are indeed often recognized for leading with passion and purpose, for embodying change while staying authentic to their cause, imagine what happens in their absence. Imagine what happens when women leaders are not seated at the table where decisions concerning entire communities are being made. Communities with whom they are inherently linked, communities they understand only too well. Indeed, let us, take, let us, let, let us all take a moment to imagine what would, what would fill that void. Allow me to share with you two specific mechanisms that illustrate the development imprint left when principles of gender equality inform and permeate, permeate every area in society. My first example borrows from our National Gender Monitoring Office, or the GMO, 
whose mission is to effectively monitor gender mainstreaming in the fight against gender-based violence and all forms of injustice in public, private, civil society, and religious institutions for the achievement of gender equality in Rwanda. The second example I would like to share with you comes from the American 2020 Women on Boards organization, which commits to increase the percentage of women on US company boards to 20% or greater by the year 2020. In fact, the 2020 Women on Boards is guided by the following principles, which, speaks, which speak uh, volumes for the need to encourage more women to embrace their leadership capab capabilities. And the principles affirm the following. We are inclusive, we are passionate, we are focused, we are change agents who do not promote business as usual, we are advocates, we are respectful, we are urgent in our activities, we are educators, we are ethical, we are believers, and together we can make it happen. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is why our women of impact come in. This is why you and I come in. Our collective knowledge, skill, sets, vast and varied experiences will help us innovate, challenge the norms and standards that do not promote equality, and always find the best possible solutions which truly ensure that no one is left behind. I hope that the esteemed panel, as, we, as well as the audience, will offer candid contributions that will dare the uncharted path, go to places we have not been in, the, in, the, in these discussions, and which I truly believe will bring us closer to solving our common and individual challenges related to family planning and sexual reproductive health. Let us all walk away from uh, this session satisfied that we have let no stone un uh, unturned and that our ideas will solidly contribute to strengthening current interventions so that we are indeed uh, the women of impact, global leaders, creating the most positive of changes. Thank you indeed for your kind attention.